Hey guys, it's Bryce and Aaron with another Fusion 360 update, and this one is huge. We're bringing a new workspace to Fusion 360, but before we get there, Aaron's got some stuff to show us. What do you got? Really exciting stuff, the deep update. So when you have a component within a component within a component, and you make a change to it, you don't have to go and dig down in order to have it update. So let's take a look. For the July update, I'm gonna use this awesome wheel loader model, and what I was working on last was the bucket. With the body done, I'll give it a name for organizational purposes, something many of you do as well. Then after, I need to convert it to a component so I can join it to the larger assembly. In the past, the component generated from the body would take on a generic name, requiring me to type in the name once again. As shown, this is no longer the behavior, and the time you spent renaming bodies will not be lost, fulfilling multiple idea station requests. After quickly adding a couple of as-built joints, I'll check to ensure it has the proper mechanics. Looks good. Speaking of proper mechanics, let's check to see that this has the nimble turning radius these vehicles often require. When I go to drag it, it stops at a shallow angle as there are collisions occurring. To fix this, I need to edit the front body component, which is from a distributed design and buried two levels deep. Thanks to the highlighting, it's easy enough to find and open in its own window, and to quickly change this design, I'll use our powerful direct editing techniques. With that done, we'll save the file and jump back into the main assembly where we're not surprised to see the out-of-date warnings. In previous versions of Fusion, I need to open the main body subassembly, update, then jump back into the main assembly and update once again. And just imagine if this was buried three or four levels down. Now using deep update, you only need to worry about updating at the top level, and Fusion 360 will take care of the rest. As expected, the previously created joints are preserved, and to finish off, let's verify that we've improved the turning radius. Next up, I want to add some text and a label to the bottom of this, so we'll rotate around and show the sketch I previously created. Don't ask me what that says, but what I can say is that it is way too big for the model. Never fear! With the new scaling tool within the sketch environment, I can change the font size and adjust all the sketch entities in one single and efficient action. Just select the items that need scaling, a point from which to scale it from, then click and drag, or if you know a scaling factor, key it in. I'll move the now properly sized sketch down to the body, and create an emboss with the profiles and text. Next up, let's talk about what that actually means. Hergestellt von Deutschen Sprechen Raum? Yeah. I'll never laugh at Germans trying to say squirrel again. Anyway, that roughly means made by German speakers, which is related to the fact that Fusion 360 is now available to the 100 plus million native speakers in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and all over the world. To use this, just change the option in your preferences, restart Fusion, and you'll be designing, editing, simulating, and applying appearances in your first language. Willkommen. Those of you using a 3D mouse will be happy to hear that the Orbit Center now maintains consistent logic with your mouse and trackpad, making it easier to manipulate. In addition, when a portion of the model is off the screen, the Orbit Point resets to the center of the screen after each move. The drawing environment saw a couple of great enhancements, starting with parts lists. Now you have the ability to split long tables, flip depending on sheet location, and quickly and easily edit column widths. I'd like to also note the user interface, which now features consistency with the rest of Fusion 360. The crosshairs have gone away, and the view creation dialogs feature easy to distinguish and common icons. Definitely some nice improvements there. Another thing many of you have been asking for, drawing templates, is now at your fingertips. Once your drawing has been set up, use the output drawing template command to reuse things like drawing standards, annotation and cheat settings, and title block and border in your next drawing. To use the exported template, the next time you create a new drawing, you'll see a drop down that will enable you to find and reuse the templates. Great stuff, team. So, not having to rename components that I've already renamed at the body level is something that I really appreciate seeing. Big props to our developers. You know, they, they pump out a lot of updates in a very short amount of time, so thanks, guys. Yeah, big props. They're always bringing new stuff, just like this mesh environment. What it is, is bringing mesh mixer functionality right inside Fusion 360 so you can edit your STLs and OBJs in Fusion 360. Let's go ahead and check it out though. In the latest Fusion 360 update, the team has brought a preview of the new mesh workspace. Now we can edit STLs, OBJs, right within Fusion 360. 
This is a preview, so you'll have to enable the Mesh workspace in the Preferences. This preview enables Mesh Mixer functionality, which will add Mesh editing tools as part of Fusion 360's product development toolset. Let's start by jumping into the Mesh workspace by selecting Create Mesh. Now we are presented with the Mesh editing tools. We can start by inserting a triangular mesh. Instantly, we are given a preview of our crankshaft before the mesh is placed in our design. The triad lets us manipulate the model before placing the design. In addition, we can change the units to scale, move the model to the ground, and place the design at the center with the global origin. Now let's take a closer look at this mesh. We can see that we have some sliver triangles, and this mesh is not very uniform, so let's use the remesh tool. Now we can choose a section to remesh, or we can choose to do the entire body. We will go ahead and change the density of the mesh to increase by 50%. Let's preview the changes before accepting. Notice that we lose some of the shape, especially near the edges, because of the change to the mesh. We can choose to preserve sharp edges, and you will notice the mesh updates to add a higher density near the edges. Now let's take a look at another mesh, of this duct. This mesh is relatively dense, so we can reduce the mesh by half. In the Reduce tool, we get the option to reduce the mesh by using its density, face count, or tolerance. Finally, this mesh was created from a legacy design. These attachment flanges are no longer needed in our new design. Let's use our brush tool to select the triangles that make up the flange. Let's open up the mesh palette to view a few different selection tools. Here I can change the size of my brush. Whoa, that was a little too big of a radius though. Rather than using the slider, I can use the square bracket keys on my keyboard. Once a few triangles are selected, I could see in the mesh palette the number of selected faces. In addition, we have different tools to modify the selection. These all have hotkeys, which are presented as tooltips. For example, I can grow and shrink my selection by holding the shift and using the up and down keys. Don't worry, I can always add to my selection by dragging over different faces. Now let's use the erase and fill command to remove this flange. Here we can change the density of the new filled mesh and the weight of the tangency of the new faces. And with that command we remove the flange and cap the hole. Now let's take a look at this bike helmet our team just scanned. Unfortunately, while they scanned the helmet, they could not get to the bottom of the model. So we have some open holes in our mesh. Here's a little trick. If you have your brush over an open loop and you double click, Fusion 360 will select the entire loop. Now, I could use the erase and fill command to cap this hole, but that would require five different commands to cap all five holes. Instead, let's use the rebuild as solid command. This will cap all the holes and make this a watertight mesh. This is an essential tool for those scans that may be tricky to scan the entire design. In this next example, I have a solid model of an axle I would like to prototype. Unfortunately, we do not have the CAD model for the rim of this design we used to produce. Luckily, we have the physical rim laying around the office, so we can get a mesh of the rim with our scanner. First, we can convert this B-Rep axle into a mesh. Then, we can insert our mesh of our rim into our design. Finally, we can merge the meshes to produce one mesh body located in the browser. Then we can produce a prototype of this design by sending this new STL to our printer. In our last mesh example, we will take a look how to reverse engineer these binoculars. We have used a scanner to get a mesh of our physical design. Now I would like to get this design as a solid body in Fusion 360. Let's finish the mesh and jump back into the model environment. First, Let's use the Create Mesh Section tool to create sections of this binocular. Before we can use these sections, we need to turn them into a fusion sketch. To do this, we can use the Fit Curve to Mesh Section tool. This has different tools to fit lines, arcs, and splines to the mesh section we just created. Since we have a fully closed loop, we can use the Closed Loop Spline section to convert this into a Fusion 360 sketch entity. In this case, we will have to reproduce these steps several times to get our desired output. Once all of our different sketch profiles are created, we can loft between them. Now this is just like any other Fusion 360 geometry. We can add holes, shell, or even jump into the rendering environment to produce a rendering. 
Well, these are some of the new mesh tools we have implemented into Fusion 360. We will be adding more functionality and improving these tools to make Fusion 360 the complete product development tool for any workflow. Well, I hope you're as excited as I am to get your hands on that mesh workspace. What Bryce was doing there with it was incredible. Yeah, it's awesome. And this is only day one. We're going to bring more functionality to the mesh environment as the days go on. But if you want to see more learning content, check out our YouTube. We have quick tips on there. And we also have some new learning content on autodesk.com slash fusion360. We'll add a link to the description. Don't worry about trying to get it from what he just said there. Take a look at it. A lot of great information. Thanks for watching.